a lot of mums come to my classes with the aim of getting back running or to play a sport. And so there was two feet hops, 30 seconds, looking at load in the pelvic floor. And the first Tuesday we did it, I said, don't think about peak every time. Just trust your pelvic floor. And about five seconds in, four women stopped. And I was like what's going on this is an issue that needs to be sorted so many people avoid jumping jacks trampolines because they never get the help so there's something in the class that creates uh, a problem like that this sounds horrible but i love it when that happens because now we have a problem we can work with are you done with being that pregnant or postpartum mom in the gym who is always stuck on the sidelines feeling horrible saying how come no one ever told me this Are you ready to finally say no to a mom life filled with excess weight, injury, overwhelm, and fatigue? Then help is here. Welcome to the Strong Moms Fitness Podcast, where we dive deep into the information you need to be the strongest woman in and out of the gym, even if you are a mom. If you are done going through your pregnancy or postpartum fitness journey clueless and unprepared, if you are ready to commit and say yes to being that badass fit mom who is shredded and stronger than before the baby, Well, listen up, because this is where we talk about all of the things your doctor or trainer never told you about so that you can achieve the body you want and take your athletic strength and performance to the next level. Get ready, because here's your host, Daisy Bravo. Hey, Daisy here. Sorry to interrupt before we even get into the goods, but wanted to let you know that this interview with Martina was insanely long with so many awesome, you know, nuggets and pieces of information that I know you're going to love and you really want to focus on. So what I am going to do, because this interview went so long, I'm going to split it up and have episode one and episode two, just so that it's not so overwhelming for you guys. I really don't like to bring episodes that are longer than an hour, so that's why I wanted to break this up for you. So enjoy the first half, and then next week, look forward to the second half. Thanks, guys. Let's jump back in. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode. I am really excited because I have wanted to talk about urinary incontinence for some time. Now, if you are postpartum, this might be something that you're dealing with right now. And it uh, could be when you sneeze, when you laugh, if you get scared, if you're trying to jump on a trampoline, if you're leaving a puddle behind, then you're definitely going to want to listen to this episode. And today I'm chatting with a colleague, Martina Dunn. She is an amazing personal trainer from the from Ireland. And she is super passionate about helping women overcoming their challenges and achieving their fitness goals. She is a great mix of evidence-based advice for women in both health and fitness. And it seems like Now, just like me, she found that there was very little information for pregnant and postpartum women online and in the gym. And so she really wanted to help these women. So she did actually did a number of courses that we have done. She has shared a number of the same courses. She's gone through a number of the same courses that I have. And uh, we found many uh, connections. So she has really taken the time and continually educating herself about pregnancy and postpartum health. So she loves getting outdoors. She is an adventure race runner and she loves to compete regularly in adventure races and has actually had some podium finishes in this epic sport. So I am really stoked to have her on the show today. Day. Uh, so a warm welcome to Martina. Martina, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for being here today. I'd love you to share your journey in health, fitness, the work that you do, and 
how your journey has caused you to evolve your career over time? Okay. Well, I suppose starting with the sort of fitness aspect, um, I played rugby. I wasn't sporty as a kid and I, I took up rugby at 18. Um, and it was only, I started running in the off season. So the summer here in Ireland um, to keep fit for the, the rugby and really enjoyed it. I can't say I enjoyed my first 5k, but after that, I really enjoyed it. I really got into it. And I did a marathon and I did some triathlons and I started mountain running and I went away then to New Zealand. I was working with horses. That's my primary degree. I went away to New Zealand to work with horses. And it was over there that I just really decided that probably health and fitness was more, I was more passionate about it. It was probably going to be a better career fit. And um, so when I came back to Dublin, I retrained as a PT and I started off in like just a commercial gym nothing like a change gym it was very standard the same sort of timetable there was boot camps and spins and stuff like that I was the only female on staff and we were quite small I got a lot of the the female clients and they the more I worked with them the more I realized like some of them were trying to get pregnant some of them had been pregnant were coming back to work say postpartum and had joined the gym next door to work or whatever and they just, I just found that I couldn't really help them because I was still training them like normal people. And they are normal people, but they have special considerations. And so that's when I did my first, I did Girls Gone Strong, then the, the American group. I did their uh, pre and postnatal certificate. And I really enjoyed it. But again, I felt like that there was gaps in my knowledge or that I could have a deeper understanding of really what women needed post postnatally and prenatally as well. So that led me on to doing Brianna Battle's pregnant and postpartum athleticism course. Although I'd done a bit of CrossFit in New Zealand, nothing crazy. I really enjoyed the sort of heavier, sweatier sort of stuff that Brianna um, helps you to understand and coach. Um, but again, I was, I was dealing with women with prolapse then and diastasis and stuff like that. And I just found that it was a bit, again, there was gaps in my knowledge or I wanted to know more how it could help those women. So I went to Anthony Lowe's course in July 2019 down in Cork, which is in Ireland as well. And it was absolutely mind blown. He just challenged my beliefs on everything. It just really encouraged me to throw out the rule book when dealing with these sort of women and the, a lot of it is mental and I know that for myself from my own sort of incontinence issues and so then during the, the first lockdown in 2020 I did Sarah Duval's uh, post postpartum corrective exercise specialist course and again it was just the knowledge the depth of knowledge that Sarah Duval has and the way she presents the information it's very easy to understand and it's very practical and you can apply it very easily to um you know clients and it, even online now it was very easy to help the women to understand how posture and alignment and stuff can affect their diastasis healing or make their prolapse symptoms uh, feel worse awesome i love that so you've been quite busy then <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you sound like a great resource for all your clients and I was really excited to bring you on the show today to actually chat about urinary incontinence. And I understand you've got some personal experience in that department. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, there's a, a stat, and I don't know if it's the same for the US, but it is for Ireland, UK, is that one in three women will suffer with uh, some form of incontinence, whether urinary fecal incontinence. And I think the main thing is it's not a pregnancy postpartum issue. I'm 33 I've never been pregnant never had a baby but I've suffered with incontinence for years and um, it's literally only this year that I've looked into getting help which is terrible because it's um it's that sort of self-care that it, we really should be doing we're, we're terrible for you know putting things on the long finger and oh I'll sort this out first or I'll, when my business is bigger or when I'm helping more clients I'll I'll go to a pelvic health physio um, and I'll get that sorted out and it's crazy because like anyone who would have done a consult with me before joining one of the classes if they said like oh I'm suffering with leaking or whatever I would have been like you need to go to a pelvic health physio 
but I wasn't taking that advice myself. Um, yeah, it was just, it got really bad last year and I was just a little bit fed up with it. And I was like, 33, this is really, it's debilitating um, because I'm quite a amateur elite runner, if, 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 if you want to call it that. I run quite a few miles, but if every two miles you're stopping to go to the toilet, like it just, it's very frustrating. And then I would have instances of leaking daily and even in work, even just standing, it doesn't have to be, it's not like a stress related, it's not impact, it just seems to happen, which is, um, well, at the time was quite, it was quite annoying, quite frustrating. Wow, that's crazy. Were you dealing with more of an urge incontinence or stress incontinence or both? And can you chat more about what some of the difference are? Because I know a lot of pregnant postpartum yeah. clients that I see and work with, mainly stress incontinence is mm -hmm. uh, the main thing you'll see in some pregnant moms. Can you kind of talk about some of the differences? Yeah, so like three, when we talk about urinary incontinence, stress is that load and impact so running jumping where the pelvic floor is just not strong enough to take the weight of the bladder and then you've got it's almost like a water balloon bursting when the balloon hits the ground it it, it explodes that's quite like exaggerated and dramatic and um, so it can be anything from a couple of drops to almost a full voiding and then with urge incontinence it tends to be when the bladder gets to a certain percentage and there's a little bit of habitual training in this so um, because my incontinence, so basically when your bladder gets a certain amount full, it voids or you get a strong um, contraction from the detrusor muscle to um, encourage that voiding. Um, and you mightn't even be in, in a toilet or near a toilet uh, when that happens. And that can be coached into your bladder and your pelvic floor, your detrusor muscle. Um, you can get like a mixed incontinence where it's both stress and urge. And then I suppose the other thing to be aware of is overactive bladder or frequency issues, which I think having chatted to my mom and having chatted to a load of my friends since I've started talking about this in a more open manner, a load of people, much more, many more people have frequency issues. I would say it's almost two and three people will have frequency issues, um, which mightn't be associated with like an incontinence. You might leak, but if you're going to the toilet more than six to eight times in, in 24 hours or waking up in the middle of the night and you kind of have an issue there that needs to be addressed by a, a pelvic health physio. Sure. That, cool. Thank you. Have you since gone to see a physio and started to take care of what you're dealing with? Yeah. So like this will actually be my sort of second attempt at getting it sorted out, I'm going to say. The first time I went about two years ago, I went to a, a pelvic health physio and it just wasn't a pleasant experience. Um, and, I, and I think that's, it's, it's actually shaped my view in the whole pelvic health physio thing. When I stayed away for a while because I'd had the negative experience, but also I don't recommend just any pelvic health physios. Now I work with a small network of physios that I refer people to because I know I can trust them. Um, so the, the first experience was like it, it was just very it wasn't dealt with very sensitively and um, she was from a horse background as well as me or knew people we knew people in the same circle but she was basically talking about like handling mares and mares falling down so that's a female horse while she was doing the internal exam I was just a bit like yeah I was like this is a bit you're talking about mares and vets and stuff and you're doing an internal exam on myself and I was like didn't really feel comfortable and she gave me pelvic floor exercises to do and all that sort of stuff and sent me away and I had a, a repeat um, appointment in two weeks time or something and when I came back like the issues hadn't got any better like first start two weeks is probably not long enough to have seen any real effect but she said to me about drinking coffee and I said I'm drinking like one or two cups a day that would be it and um she basically said, you're not trying hard enough. You need to stop drinking coffee and go back, go away and come back to me when you've basically worked a bit more. And I was okay, that's not a nice thing to be told because I was trying. Like, it's so difficult to control that. So I think that experience really colored my view on the whole pelvic health thing. And then at Anthony Lowe's course back in 2019, met a, there was a physio on the course and I remember at the time thinking like she was just deadly like she got it from day one and we were on the same page and 
she was working in the sort of next county and she was involved in one of the maternity hospitals and just again a really knowledgeable practical person so when I decided then when the incontinence got really bad I decided right I'm going to go and I'm going to see her so I started working with her back last year because uh, physios are essential basically so the first lockdown everything was closed but once we came through the summer here in Ireland last year they allowed sort of physios to open back up because it takes the pressure off the hospital if you're going to a physio for um you know issues you're probably not going to A&E with a sore knee or something like that so I start working with her and it was really eye-opening and um, the internal exam was like completely different it was so much like calmer it was quieter yes there was conversation but there wasn't like inappropriate conversation and she told me like and because obviously I understand the female pelvic floor she didn't treat me like an idiot she was like so this is whatever and you probably know that and this is what we're going to do and and really involved me in every step of the sort of treatment plan or treatment process which I really enjoyed I really liked as well because it felt like I had autonomy of what was going on um so there was a couple of things like my pelvic floor was hypertensive um, and that means over tight so basically like me continually doing kegels without relaxing my pelvic floor can just make that problem worse and like a tight pelvic floor can't contract as well as a, a relaxed loose pelvic floor so that was the first step was really going back and relaxing on the working on the relaxing of the sort of pelvic floor and then working on the, the kegels because I have overactive bladder issues as well she looked at my fluid intake and so I did a bladder flow chart basically you just record what time you drink what volume and what did you drink and then on the other end you record what time you avoided the volume and she realized pretty quickly that um like I was peeing sort of between 45 minutes and an hour. So every 45 minutes or an hour, I'd be going to the toilet. And I used to wake up during the night as well. So I think at the worst of my pelvic floor issues, I was peeing 18 times a day. Yeah, which is a lot of time. It's I barely make it through a postnatal class, an hour long postnatal class. At the end of the class, I'd be like really needing to go to the toilet. And uh, I've had leaks in the middle of class and stuff like that. And because when you're online, like if you're in person, you can just say to everybody, just stay doing what you're doing. I'm just going to run to the bathroom. But you don't want to walk out of an online thing because they're just looking at an empty screen then. So thankfully now it has gotten a fair bit better. Um, so I think we've I've come to realize that with the urge incontinence, unlike the stress incontinence, um, mechanically I'm fine. My pelvic floor is strong. So I can do box jumps. I can do depth jumps. I can run and there's no leaks, but it's triggers like coming home, driving in the driveway or my key in the door or the same spot in the road, which causes that urge or like even just sometimes walking past the toilet at home my brain just links being near a toilet with needing to go so it's been quite it's been quite interesting because after all of the sort of kegels and the sort of impact stuff we actually looked at like mindset so visualizing myself running down the road running say loops of a spot where I don't need to go to the toilet not stopping to go to the toilet um, and then building it up progressively. So if I would walk past, uh, say I've run down the road and there's a, a spot where I always need to go to the toilet. Instead of running past that spot and having a leak, I stop and walk and recite the alphabet to myself or the 10 times tables. And then I'm building up that tolerance and then I maybe jog past. So reducing my pace and then again, distracting myself with the alphabet 10 times tables and then um, eventually just being able to run past it. Um, so it's been quite interesting because it's not always the fault of the pelvic floor. Does that make sense? Yeah, it sounds like there's a huge mental kind of mind body component there that it almost flips the switch, like a sensor or something that's tripped off once you get a certain stimulus or you, yeah, like you're saying, a certain spot of your run. It's, oh, it's go time all of a sudden. <laughs> so that's yeah. interesting. And I'm sure... 
it's, you know, one thing to do some corrective exercise or to build or to help you learn to re- relax properly, but you're actually retraining your brain is what it sounds like. So that, that can be, some people may say, oh, that's too much, <laughs> that's too much work for me. <laughs> it's some, so much easier sometimes to just oh, we'll bang it out in the gym. But when it comes to some of that mental work, that deeper work, sometimes people are, <laughs> it's easy to say, oh, I don't have time for that today. Maybe next time I'll work on that. So I really like your journey and your story. Do you, do you know when this all started or what prompted this? Do you know how this kind of all got going for you? No, like I can't pinpoint a specific time in my life when these issues started. I, like from being like a, t- a teen, I remember having urge issues and leaking from time to time Um and then it was one of the cool things about, sorry, I should name check my physio because she, she'll love the shout out, but Laura Ward um, in LWF Physio in Maynooth uh, in Ireland. But she, I, I loved her intake process because she asked about like traumatic uh, pelvic or vaginal episodes or, or events. And like, I fell out of a tree when I was probably like 11 or 12, maybe 13, and I landed on my pubic bone. And like my male cousin carried me into my daddy and my, my dad was like, where are you hurt? And I was just like, I didn't, I I was so embarrassed that I didn't say like I've I've landed on my vagina. I said, I hurt my arm. So he was like pulling my arm up and down and going like, does that hurt? And I was like, (laughs) yeah. So there's been a couple of incidents like that where I, I think that maybe ties into the whole mind muscle thing. Um, so if there's like an, it, it, it's the same for women who have had maybe traumatic labors or deliveries, that there is um, a part of the brain that holds on to that pain and can cause issues then down the line for pelvic floor or bladder. Wow, that's pretty wild. Now, and it's cool because you work with, you know, pregnant and postpartum women and it, it's, there's a connection there that you guys have. Um now, do you work with your moms through urinary incontinence and do you help them through that process, that journey that they're going through, if that's something they're suffering with? Yeah, definitely. Because I, I think it's so, so many people don't want to talk about it. And as an extension of that, so many people are not getting the help that they need. Um, so I remember during the, so I run eight week blocks for my online program and the first four week block there was just because I follow the return to run guidelines because a lot because I'm a runner a lot of mums come to my classes with the aim of getting back running or getting back into playing a sport or something like that and so there was some like just two feet hops and 30 seconds with 30 seconds rest in the first four week sort of programming and that was basically looking at uh, load and impact on the pelvic floor and the first Tuesday we did it, like there was 10 people on a little Zoom screen. And as soon as I said, okay, this is what we're going to do. And this is the reason why. And then I talked about like breathing strategies, alignment. I said, don't think about Kegeling every time because you just won't be able to keep up with the speed of the hops. I said, just trust your pelvic floor to rebound every time. And I said, okay, three, two, one, go. And about five seconds in, four women stopped. And I was like okay like what, what's going on and they were like yeah gonna leak gonna leak gonna leak and I was like okay you like we'll, we'll put a, a time for you to talk to me one-on-one because this is an issue that needs to be sorted and so many people just avoid like jumping jacks trampolines all of that sort of stuff because they just they never get the help so we start off really like that if there's something in the class that creates uh, a problem like that and it, this sounds horrible, Daisy, but I love it when that happens because it's, ah, oh, now we have a problem we can work with. Like if everyone's just there and they're like, yeah, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, and not telling me, I, like I can't help. But now I can help and I can give them strategies and I can say, okay, listen, you know, like Anthony Lowe's thing is try something different. So maybe don't be so rigid, like let your body go. Reverse your breathing pattern. So instead of exhaling as you land, maybe inhale. Can you do that? Can you do long exhales? What's your posture in alignment? And, and then like I'll, 
while also saying to them, maybe you need to go and go back to a pelvic health physio, look at your pelvic floor, and maybe you need to go back and do some Kegels and that sort of stuff. But if they've been there um, and done like a pelvic health assessment, then it's, did you do your rehab? Have you been doing your Kegels? And a lot of the time the answer is no. So it's okay, that's the reason why the pelvic floor is struggling now because it's just not strong. But sometimes there's other reasons um, like maybe they're lacking in sleep, they're, uh, they have a coffee before the class, like coffee is an irritant on the bladder. You come into the end of the class, you're trying to do these hops and suddenly you're getting symptoms. Or could you not have the coffee before class? Does it make a difference? Um, so it's interesting to uh, troubleshoot those sort of scenarios with them and, and make sure that they get really good advice. Awesome. I love that. Now, is now from your experience, do you know if there's any sort of preventative measures that maybe a, a pregnant woman can take into her own hands or maybe a mom who is within maybe the first month postpartum? Is there something that we can just focus on early so that we can prevent this becoming a bigger problem later on? I definitely think looking at your posture and your alignment and how you breathe, they're the two things that I think are really key. Um, when we think about where the pelvis is and its relation, or pelvic floor is and its relationship to the diaphragm, having those stacked over each other so that they can work together. You know what I mean? And I know it's harder in pregnancy because the you know fetus and uterus takes up so much space that diaphragm struggles to get down pelvic floors under a little bit of load and um, but it's really watching that alignment because you just um you're helping them to work in a, a position that is a, is an advantage and um, for pregnant women like it's looking at reducing that impact on the pelvic floor so i know some people i know sophie power do you know sophie power she's an ultra runner yeah so i know mm-hmm. she's run through her pregnancies and stuff but i think maybe there's and it goes back to what Brianna Battles was saying about this whole like athlete sort of mindset. Although you might be capable of running when you're six, seven months pregnant, is it the best thing that you can be doing for your body right now? Like maybe you should be doing um, some stationary cycling or um, low impact sort of um, cardio or just not pounding the pelvic floor so it's at a point where when you have your baby you've left with issues and even like uh lowering the weights on like squats overhead presses deadlifts that sort of stuff make sure you're breathing through those movements so you're not directing pressure down onto your pelvic floor and i really like upper body exercises or like with the support of a bench for like your um your chest press or your bench press I think they're really, really key. And even for rows, because we don't really know how much um, pressure you're putting down on your pelvic floor. It's hard to judge that. And if you don't have good body awareness, you're definitely not sure. And then early on the postpartum period, it's trying to reestablish that 360 breathing, that good connection between the pelvic floor and the diaphragm. Maybe doing Kegels, but maybe just focusing on making sure you're you can relax the pelvic floor to its full length and then working on building strength up there. Um, But I think starting slow when you're newly postpartum is more important than, um, I suppose, focusing on getting back to it. It's really easy to get caught up in the whole, I want to be back running within six weeks or whatever, but putting in the groundwork so that you're still running when you're 60 rather than just trying to get back into it too quickly. Awesome. Now, will moms ever be able to jump on a trampoline again or do some double unders or box jumps? Or is this just something that we have to accept? Maybe it can improve, but is there ever, in your experience and some of the women you work at, is there hope for us to heal 100% or retrain ourselves 100% and when you help moms do you take them through a progression or different steps to get there I'd love to hear more about that all right guys I am leaving you on a cliffhanger I thought this was an interesting spot to stop because I know a lot of you are concerned about the answer to this question so you're gonna have to turn in uh next week 
to figure out the answer to if we can ever get back to jumping on trampolines and running again without any leakage issues. So you're not going to want to miss next week's episode. Thanks guys for checking us out this week. We'll see you next time on the Strong Moms Fitness Podcast. And if you are a mom who is struggling with leakage or maybe diastasis, prolapse, or if you're someone who wants to get back to the gym safely after baby without injury, I want you to check out my newest program, Rebuild After Baby. You can find it on my website at rebuildafterbaby.com. And this will help you getting back to the gym safely and work on things like leakage, diastasis, prolapse, so that you can get back to the gym and do the things that you love. Thanks so much for joining me and have a great day. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you next time on the Strong Moms Fitness Podcast. Now remember, go subscribe so that you are the first to know as soon as new episodes drop. Also, be sure you don't miss out on your chance to win a free program of your choice from Strong Moms Fitness. All you have to do is leave a five-star review, screenshot it before you submit, and send it to daisy at strongmomsfitness.com. Your review helps other people find our show. And as a thank you, once a month, we choose the review that makes us all warm and tingly inside and award that lucky lady a free program of their choice. So do it now. It could be you. See you next time, you badass mom you. A lot of mums come to my classes with the aim of getting back running or to play a sport.